Hey everyone, get this. Imagine if uh, your computer could handle all those like little tedious tasks you got to do every day, you know, like booking meetings, digging up data, all that, uh, while you get to focus on the big picture. That's kind of the promise behind this new AI tool from Anthropic. It's called Computer Use. And uh, well, it's pretty wild. Yeah, it's a fascinating development for sure. What Anthropic is doing here is uh, they're really pushing the boundaries of what's possible with real-time screen interaction. And honestly, that's been a major roadblock in AI development up until now, really. So we're talking about an AI that can actually, like, what, move stuff around on your screen in real time. What can this thing actually do? So the big idea is to automate a lot of those, you know, repetitive tasks we all face every single day on our computers. Think like data entry, scheduling, even some uh, online research tasks. But the key difference here, it's not just giving you information like those uh, old school AI assistants. Computer use can actually interact with like your apps, your websites, your files directly. Oh, OK. So it's hands on. The article mentioned a demo where this tool uh, like planned a whole hike. And it wasn't just pulling up a map. It was looking at the user's, like, preferences, checking sunrise times, even sent a calendar invite. Right. And that's a perfect example of what makes this tech so groundbreaking. It's not just about, like, click this or type that. It's the AI connecting the dots, you know, right. doing these multi-step tasks across all these different platforms, different apps. It's pretty amazing. It's impressive, sure. But... Honestly, it's also a little unnerving, right? Like, if this AI is mm -hmm. controlling my computer, what's stopping it from, I don't know, going rogue? Or even worse, what about hackers? Ah, uh, a million dollar question. And it seems like Anthropic is uh, very aware of that, those concerns, I mean. They're talking about all these security measures they're building in. There's this process, they call it red teaming. Red team, yeah. Yeah, so basically they have these, like, ethical hackers who try to hack into their own system, like they're trying to break in from the outside so they can find any weaknesses and patch them up before, you know, it goes out to the public. So, like, a dedicated security team, but for AI constantly testing. Yeah, exactly. Plus, the articles mention that developers can set up their own restrictions, too, on what the AI can and can't do within their app. So that's like, what, another layer of security right there? Okay, that is reassuring. <laughs> but with all this talk about security and developers, it kind of sounds like this is more for like big companies, not so much regular people like me. Well, yeah, you're right, partly. Right now it's in beta testing, and it's mostly companies like uh, GitLab and Canva who are trying it out. But Anthropic has hinted that they might make a version for, you know, everyone eventually down the line. So this could be something we see, you know, rolled out to the public in the future. OK, that's exciting. But before we go too far down that road, let's bring it back to like right now. Right, of course. What's the current status? Well, the main thing to remember is computer use is a huge step, but it's still early days. Even Anthropic admits that there are some things, like really complex tasks and situations, that it can't handle yet. And that's really, I think, a key point here. This isn't like a finished product, you know? It's going to be really interesting to see how it develops. Yeah, totally. So while we wait for uh, all the kinks to get worked out and, you know, see what happens with this wider release, let's talk about the impact for a sec. Sure, sure. Like, what could this actually mean down the road? Yeah, even though it's early, this computer use thing has got a lot of people talking, especially in those industries where, you know, people are on computers all day. Totally. One of the articles actually mentioned something about uh, enterprise customer. Yeah. What's that all about? Oh, that's just uh, fancy talk for businesses and organizations, especially the big ones. Like, think uh, data entry, customer service, even some types of research. A lot of those jobs involve, like... Tons of repetitive tasks, digital stuff, things that, you know, theoretically this tool could handle. So instead of like putting people out of jobs, this AI could actually free them up to focus on, you know, more interesting work. Exactly. Imagine like customer service reps who don't have to spend all day answering the same questions over and over. They can actually spend time on the complicated cases, the ones that really need a human touch or like data analysts. They could hand off all that tedious data cleaning stuff to the AI and actually have time to, I don't analyze, do the interesting work. Makes sense. Let the AI handle the boring stuff. Humans can do what humans are good at, like the creative thinking, you know, solving problems. Yeah. Now, of course, it's not all going to be, you know, sunshine and roses, right? There yeah. will be some bumps in the road. Like uh, what happens to the jobs that do get automated? People are going to need retraining. We're all going to have to learn to work a little differently. Totally. And that's something, you know, we have to think about now. It's not just about the tech. It's about how we as a society adapt to it, mm. how we use it. Right. 
Right. And that's why it's good that Anthropic seems to be, you know, taking their time with this, doing it carefully, working with those developers, getting feedback from these early adopters. That way they can, you know, work out the kinks, fix any problems before it gets, you know, too widespread. Yeah. Definitely seems like they're taking this seriously, which is good, you know, when you're talking about something this potentially powerful. But let's not forget about us regular folks. No, it's not. Yeah. All yeah. those people who aren't, you know, developers are working for some big company. Right. And... Like I was saying earlier, it sounds like Anthropic hasn't, you know, ruled out the possibility of creating something for everyone eventually. So what could that look like? I mean, how could this computer use thing actually, you know, work for us in our everyday lives? Now that, that's yeah. where things get really interesting. It's like, instead of me telling my computer what to do step by step, it can just like do it. Book a flight, reserve a table, put it all on my calendar, all while I, you know, sit here and sip my coffee. Right. And and that's just like the tip of the iceberg. Think about like accessibility for people with disabilities. This could be huge. I mean, it could make it so much easier for them to, you know, use computers, get things done online, things that might have been really difficult before. Yeah, that's a really good point. It's not just about like convenience. It's about making tech work for everyone. Right. Exactly. And, you know, this is all still pretty new as this tech gets you know, more advanced, who knows what we could do with it? Like maybe personalized learning or AI tools for, I don't know, artists, writers, musicians. The possibilities are, well, kind of endless, really. It's easy to get carried away, right? Oh, for sure. Like we said, it's still early days. Exactly. There's a lot of, you know, challenges ahead. And we really have to think about those ethical questions, the impact this is going to have, you know, as it becomes more and more a part of our lives. Right. So where does that leave us? We've done our deep dive into this computer use thing. What's like the big takeaway here? Well, to me, the biggest thing is we're at this point now where, like it or not, the way we interact with computers is about to change mm. big time. And yeah, Anthropic's doing some really interesting work, but they're not the only ones, you know? There's a lot happening in the AI world right now. It's moving so fast, it's impossible to say exactly what the future holds, but I think it's safe to say that uh, that line between humans and machines, it's getting blurrier for sure. Yeah, it's exciting and, I don't know, maybe a little bit scary at the same time, isn't it? Absolutely, and that's why, you know, it's so important to have these conversations. We have to talk about the good and the bad, the potential benefits and the risks. That's how we figure out how to use this technology the right way. It's not just about what AI can do. It's about what we want it to do, mm -hmm. you know, and how we make sure that happens. Well said. It all comes back to us, really, doesn't it? Our values, our choices. So as we've seen today, this computer use tool, it has a potential to, you know, change how we work, how we learn, how we live our lives online. But it also brings up some big questions about security, about privacy, even about the future of work itself. And those are conversations, you know, we got to keep having. So as we wrap up here, I'm curious, what do you think? How do you see AI shaping your future? Think about it. It's an exciting time, that's for sure, and a little bit uncertain. But hey, we're all in this together, right? 